I'm Mr. Wenzel and welcome to my project called Applying Macroeconomic Theory to the United States Economy. The U.S. economy is currently in an expansionary period within an inflationary gap. This we know by using the three measurements of an economy, our GDP, inflation, and unemployment rate. For starters, this past fiscal year, our RGDP rose 2.7%, which shows an increase in our output as a country. RGDP is measured as the amount of goods or services made and purchased in a specific year within a country's borders. During the last quarter of the fiscal year, RGDP went up by 0.1%, significantly lower than the last increase. A sign economists believe is pointing to a contraction in the economy. However, we can attribute this low percentage change to a decrease in the United States government spending, a fiscal policy that President Obama has implemented in an effort to aid the deficit. Unemployment rate is the second statistic used to measure the strength of the economy. Unemployment, or employment, is determined by persons willing and able to hold a job and meet the requirements such as not institutionalized, older than 16, working for pay, and are currently or have been looking for a job within the last three months. The current unemployment rate is 7.7%, while the ideal or natural rate of unemployment would be between 3% and 5%. Unemployment has gone down 0.2% from last quarter, a positive outlook for America. The gray shaded areas are relatively regular uh, economic points in the government, and the crosshatched area represents the recession between 2008 and 2009. The last statistic used to measure the economy is an inflation rate determined by the rise of prices in goods and services over a period of time. Current inflation rate, released on March 15, 2013 for February of 2013, is 1.98%. I circled that with a little pink circle on the far right. This is far above the period of deflation that the U.S. economy had experienced in 2009, where the average deflation rate was negative 0.34 percent. Yet another example of how we are slowly making our way out of the recessionary gap we're in is the willingness for Congress to step back and allow for greater spending cuts, implementing classic economic theory of a laissez-faire, hands-off small government. This cut in spending has decreased our, our GDP. However, these cuts were promoted in an attempt to solve what many refer to as a deficit crisis. Today, this deficit totals about $17 trillion. National debt is all of the budget deficits adding up year after year, which is a very good reason why the Republican Party wishes to balance the budget. While fiscal policy can both help and hurt the economy when trying to decrease the deficit, Americans have seen more bad than good in terms of solutions to this problem. Obama proposes to raise taxes, which would hurt the economy in the short run and potentially slow spending, which decreases consumption, leading to a decrease in aggregate demand, then leading to a decrease in price levels and the RGDP, which leads to an increase in unemployment. Speaker of the House and Republican John Boehner proposes to raise taxes on middle class. However, economists predict that this will send us further into debt. Recently, and within Obama's two terms as pre president, unemployment has hit an all-time low since the start of the recession more than five years ago. This is accredited to his tax cuts for small businesses, emphasis on saving American companies, and bailouts. His trade agreements with South Korea, Colombia, and Panama increased U.S. exports and created more jobs, thereby lowering the unemployment rate. Here I've placed a graph that shows the unemployment rate by state during Obama's several terms. And then off to the right, I've shown what would or what has happened to net exports, which have gone up, unemployment going down, and our GDP increasing. Mm -hmm. The government has been working hard to decrease spending by decreasing the money allocated to defense and homeland security, instead turning their eyes to creating jobs in the states, building new technology, and improving infrastructure. 
Obama has proposed 18 tax cuts for small businesses in an effort to relieve small business America and create new jobs. However, some economists worry that Obama's choice in government spending is dragging the economy down, at least in the short run, because of his budget cuts. Obama advocated for postponing the expiration of the Bush tax cuts by several years in order to promote consumerism and economic growth in America. Most economists agree that this continuation of Bush's tax cuts succeeded in helping the U.S. economy despite their effects in increase, increasing the national debt. Here I have boxed a section of the deficit within Obama's two terms as president, and you can see that it's significantly higher than all the rest of the terms. And we had a positive deficit or a positive budget in or during Clinton's period as president. And then off to the right you can see projected uh, measurement by the Office of Management and Budget. Now let's compare Obama and the Democratic Party's views with those of Boehner and the Republican parties. Obama implemented taxes on the highest income earning households in America, as shown by several progressive tax increases. The highest tax bracket for people who make over $400,000 in income, in America pays 39.6% tax rate on their incomes. Obama does this in hopes of easing the large deficit. Republicans, however, as Boehner has stated, aren't as concerned with the deficit and focus more on a minimal government intervention and lower taxes or an equal tax rate for all. Democrats seem to side with the, seem to mostly side with the Keynesian economic theory of high taxes, liberal government involvement, and spending to get out of a recession. This aligns the Republicans more with a classic economic theory in their belief that the economy will correct itself, their desire for a small government hand in the economy, um, and their belief that businesses, not the government, are in charge of the economy. Republicans wish to promote small business competition, generating more money for businesses to invest. However, according to economic theory, when applying the fiscal policy of lowering government spending, you will also lower aggregate demand, which ultimately leads to a decrease in price level, a decrease in the RGDP, and an increase in unemployment, which is why this technique cannot be used in the recessionary gap that we're currently in. Thanks for watching, and that's my project.